Okay, welcome to this video where we're going to further our understanding of molecular orbital theory. If you haven't understood stuff, please go back and watch the basics of foundations of molecular orbital theory. In this video, we're going to cover a quick recap of MOT. We're going to understand filling of electrons in the S orbitals, S molecular orbitals, filling of electrons in the P molecular orbitals. And in this section, we're going to dive a little deeper. We'll understand the order of filling of electrons a little deeper than the, uh, than the S orbitals. And of course, we're going to look at what the inferences we can make from molecular orbital electronic configuration would be. Okay. All right, let's get to it. How do molecular orbitals form? Well, through linear combination of atomic orbitals. You remember that atomic orbitals are nothing but wave functions of probability of finding an electron. From n atomic orbitals, you get m n molecular orbitals, one bonding and one antibonding for each atomic orbital pair. Bonding is nothing but constructive interference of the wave functions. Antibonding is nothing but destructive interference of the wave functions. Antibonding is represented with a star. Sigma is head-on, pi is not head-on or non-coaxial bonding. Okay, A bonding molecular orbital is always lower in energy because that causes electrons to get localized between the nuclei and it's a stabilizing state for the molecule. Antibonding molecular orbital is higher in energy because it's a destabilizing orbital. Great. With that, let's consider homonuclear atoms. What are homonuclear atoms? Atoms of the same kind that are trying to get together and form molecules within neon just to understand molecular orbital theory a little deeper. Okay, let's say we have two atoms, each with one electron in the 1s orbital. How would that behave? Well, 1s and 1s, you remember how interference happens. Constructive interference gives us sigma 1s, that is the bonding molecular orbital, with an increased probability of finding electrons between the nuclei. And you have the antibonding sigma star 1s, where there is a node right in between the nuclei, right? Very high energy state, lower energy state. Now we can represent this using squares for orbitals and arrows or dots for electrons, okay? So what did we say? We said atomic orbitals of atoms, homonuclear atoms, so the same thing will be on either side, they form molecules or they come together to try and form molecules and we'll explore how the electronic configuration is going to be. First up we have one electron in each of the 1s orbitals of the at atoms. This is not how we represent electrons, right? We usually use an arrow to indicate the spin as well. Okay, now what? Let's say these atoms come close together, the electrons. Now we have two electrons that can form or fill up in the molecular orbitals and we have two molecular orbitals so one will go sit here, one will go sit there, correct? No! No, 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 no! That's not correct. In fact, you'll have to think about it in terms of energy, right? What applies here? off bar principle, yes, the lower energy orbitals, even inside molecules, fill up first before the high energy ones, okay? So keep that in mind. So the electron would pop into the lower energy one. And remember, Pauli's exclusion principle, you can't have more than one electron having all of the same quantum numbers. So with an opposite spin, we represent the other electron. So the electronic configuration of two 1s1 atoms coming together, that would be sigma 1s2, okay? Great, atomic number one was for the atoms, sigma 1s2 is the molecular orbital configuration. Easy peasy, right? Now what about atomic number three? Well, 1s2, 2s1, that is the electronic configuration of the atom. We have six electrons in all, again fill from the lowest, go upward, so you have two filling in 1s, sigma 1s, sigma star 1s and sigma 2s. Okay, so this is the electronic configuration. Remember this order, sigma 1s is of lower energy than sigma star 1s is of lower energy than sigma 2s, lower energy than sigma star 2s. Now, what if the atomic number was greater than four? Well, the p electrons also come into play right now, right? 1s2, 2s2, and then 2p starts getting filled. Let's take a deeper look at how that 2p energy level distribution would be, okay? We know 2px, 2py, 2pz, great. 2pz is the one between the two nuclei, which is oriented along the internuclear axis, right? So it's coaxial orbitals. They are symmetric about the internuclear axis and they tend to have a high uh, increase of electron finding between the nuclei or decrease of electron finding between the nuclei. What do I mean by that? They would constructively interfere to give a sigma 2pz and destructively interfere to give a sigma star 2pz. Sigma because it's head-on overlap, okay? And these will form the most stable or the least energy molecular orbital and the highest, most unstable uh, uh, energy molecular orbital, okay? Now, what about the other two uh, p orbitals? You have the px and py. Now, those, of course, they are not coaxial. They are not going to be very strong or very weak in between the two nuclei or the, along the intranuclear axis. They will form non-head-on or pi bonds. So constructively, they would form 
pi 2px and pi 2py, destructively they would form pi star 2px and pi star 2py, right? Slightly energy of the pi is greater than the sigma, pi star is slightly lesser than the sigma star. So this would be the configuration. Okay, let's just clean this up. So we see that the order of filling would what? That's correct. Sigma 2p set, then pi 2px and pi 2py, remember they're of, the, uh, or of equal energy, then pi star 2px and pi star 2py of higher energy, and then sigma star 2pz of the highest energy. But there's a small caveat out here, okay? What is that caveat? If you look at everything from 1s, 2s, 2p, check this out, okay? Let's assume that uh, we are looking at the energy level diagram with electronic configuration for molecule formed from homonuclear atoms with atomic number 8. Now let's look at how the electrons would fill. Atomic number 8, what does that mean? 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Okay, remember 2p4, you'll have individual filling of equal energy orbitals and then the pairing up, okay? Great, so that gives us so many electrons in all. Each of those electrons, let's fill them up into the molecular orbitals, assuming that the atoms are coming close together. First, 1s2, sigma 1s2, then let's write it down here as well. Sigma 1s2, then sigma star 1s2, then sigma 2s2, then sigma star 2s2, great. Then sigma 2pz2, then pi 2px and 2py each get an unpaired electron, then the electrons pair up. That's how we would fill, remember? And then the pi star 2px and 2py each get one unpaired electron. Okay, for z equal to 8, sigma 1s2, sigma star 1s2, sigma 2s2, sigma star 2s2, sigma 2pz2, pi 2px2, pi 2py2, pi star 2px1, pi star 2py1. Okay, this is the electronic configuration. Okay, great. So hold on to this thought process. Z equal to 8 is nothing but oxygen. We're talking about the dioxygen molecule. For now, let's remove the atoms and think about just the molecular orbitals. And we know that if there are inner shell electrons in the atoms, then they would form the inner molecular orbitals. So let's get rid of those for a second. What did we just do? Well, inner orbital electrons, we just pushed them down there. We're only going to consider the valence shell electrons, okay, for now. Now check this out. For z equal to 8, this is the energy level distribution. What happens when I move to z equal to 9? Did you see that? Look at these, okay? z equal to 8 and z equal to 9. What happened? The nuclei for atomic number 9 are of higher nuclear charge. They are closer and exert a stronger pull on the electrons between them thereby causing the molecular orbitals to be more stable than otherwise, okay? In other words, the energy levels reduced overall. Check that out. With 8, the energy levels went higher up. With 9, the energy levels further came down because they're closer to being more stable. Okay, what will happen when we go backward? Well, energy levels are all going higher up. Energy level, ooh, when we come to atomic number seven of the atoms, check this out. These energy levels, molecular orbitals, seem to be interacting in some manner. And that interaction causes something funny. Check this out. Whoop! What just happened there? Okay. Well, there is a decrease in nuclear charge causing an interaction between the S and P molecular orbitals. Remember SP mixing? This will cause a repulsion of energy levels of the molecular orbitals, therefore causing a redistribution of the orbital energies or the orbitals flip over in their order. Did you notice that? Great. So at 6, they go further out. At 5, they go even further out. Okay. Now let's take the reverse order. When you go to... Uh, carbon from boron, what happens? Energy levels come more stable because the nuclear charge on both the atoms is increasing, increasing all the way till 7 and then something funny happens with further increase. The S and P molecular orbitals are not interacting anymore. That does not cause a repulsion of energy levels and there's no redistribution of orbital energy back to how we had initially predicted it from oxygen onwards and again onward to fluorine and not so on. Okay. Great, so between nitrogen and oxygen, remember that there is a flipping of these energy levels that's happening. Why is that happening? Because of lower nuclear charge, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, all of these will have the nuclear charge so little that the electronic energy levels of molecular orbital energy levels are quite distributed and quite higher up. 
and at that state there is an interaction of the sigma 2 pz and the sigma star 2s that's called sp mixing this causes a repulsion where sigma star 2s goes a little lower in energy and sigma 2 pz goes a little higher in energy and when you come to the higher nuclear charge oxygen fluorine and neon atoms coming together well it turns out that that repulsion does not exist therefore the predicted order that we initially came up with works fine okay this is the only thing you got to remember for p orbitals like i said we're going to go deeper this is the deeper that we went now why are we studying all of this that's the whole funda here right you're learning about electronic configuration uh, destructive constructive energy level diagrams and all of that just so that we can understand stability bond order nature of bonding bond length and magnetic nature all right if you didn't understand anything here go back to the basics fundamentals of molecular orbital theory especially linear combination of atomic orbitals and know that there's one caveat in the p block right after nitrogen that's something that you got to remember and how and why it happens and of course by actually filling in the electronic configuration we will be able to study many more diatomic molecules all right onwards and beyond